Welcome to ETAP's video tutorial titled DC Arc Flash. In today's agenda, we will be going over the basic concepts concerning DC Arc Flash. We will also be going over the DC short circuit calculations and how they are used to calculate the arcing current. This arcing current is calculated using one of the three methods within ETAP. The method we will be discussing today is the maximum power method. The characteristics of an arc in DC arc flash are illustrated in the image in the top right hand corner. A positive and a negative conductor characterized as an anode and a cathode in which the current flows from the anode region towards the cathode region. This current flows in a form of a plasma column. This plasma column will have a voltage drop across and that voltage drop is what we call an arc voltage. Power is determined by the magnitude of both the arcing current and the arc voltage. The three available methods attempt to characterize both the magnitude of the arcing current and the arc voltage in order to determine the power released by the arc. First, let's start by talking about DC short circuit. Before we can perform any DC arc flash analysis, we must first describe the impedance and the voltage or current source in our system. In this case, we are referring to battery banks, chargers, UPS, rectifier sources which can also be modeled as either constant current or voltage behind impedance sources. The typical modeling in DC short circuit calculations is to represent these sources as Thevenin equivalents using their equivalent resistance and internal voltage to determine the amount of short circuit to a fault. As can be seen in this slide, the available DC short circuit current for a fault in this circuit is 23.03 kiloamps with a voltage source of 258 volts DC and system impedance of 0 0.0112 ohms. Now that we have the amount of DC short circuit which can be released for a bolted fault in the DC circuit based on which me methodology that we select we can determine the equivalent arc resistance and arc voltage drop across the arc in the event of an arc flash. You will notice from the circuit that the arc is modeled as an additional resistance placed in series with the system's resistance. This new circuit will help determine the magnitude of an arc fault. In the previous slide, we noticed that the magnitude of the DC short circuit current was 23.03 kiloamps. In this case, we will see that once the arc resistance is introduced into the system, the magnitude of the arcing current now becomes 13.44 kiloamps and the arc voltage drop now becomes 107.5 volts DC. The maximum power method is based on the fundamental concept that the maximum power delivered by the DC arc will occur at the point where the impedance of the system matches the resistance of the arc. This can also be defined as the point where the arcing current is half of the short circuit current or the arc resistance is half of the source voltage divided by the DC short circuit current. Using the voltage drop calculations, one can determine these relationships. The energy equation for an arc in a box or open air is utilized by ETAP to calculate the energy in the system. To calculate the energy of an arc in a box, a factor of three is introduced to account for enclosed equipment. NFPA 70E 2012 talks about this method and the equations from the previous slide come from this document. Annex D8.1 not only describes these equations but also describes their application and some of the testing done at different sites that validate the model results. This method is considered to yield conservative results for systems rated equal to or less than a thousand volts DC. The simplicity of the model is what is most beneficial about the maximum power method. 
it should always give the user results because it is based on the fundamental maximum power theorem. Also, it provides the user with the most conservative results of the three available methods within ETAP. The con behind this method is that it may not yield an accurate magnitude of the arcing current and it will not reflect an accurate operating time of protected devices. Also, it has not been tested or validated for systems rated higher than 1000 volts DC. Now let's utilize the maximum power method in ETAP. First, go to the DC system presentation. Once we have opened up the file, we should be able to go to the study case and select the proper methodology. In this case, we will be selecting the maximum power method. This option can be found in the ArcFlash method tab in the study case. Once you have selected the proper ArcFlash method, select OK. Now, let's proceed to run the ArcFlash calculations. These calculations can be run by pressing on the DC ArcFlash icon located in the top right hand corner. Click on it and the results will be displayed on the one line diagram. First I would like to show the results around the battery terminals. If we zoom into that area we will see that at the fault location at the battery terminal we will get an incident energy of 12.89 calories per centimeter square at a working distance of 18 inches and a fault clearing time of a half a second. As we have previously discussed, the fault clearing time can be de predefined by the user to calculate the amount of energy released by the arc. It is advisable that when using the maximum power method that the user uses a longer clearing time or the approximated time of exposure that a worker would be exposed to in the event of an arc flash. In essence, the user can define a one or two second fault clearing time for an exposure time. In this instance, we have predefined the fault clearing time to be a half a second, and based on the fact that we have an arcing current of 14.85 kiloamps, we will get an incident energy of 12.89 calories per centimeter square. That is how the maximum power method works, but we can also note that if you double click on a bus on any location and if you switch to the DC arc flash page we will see the energy results the flash protection boundary and the energy level which lets us know approximately how much energy there is in the system